Hi guys, it's me, Professor D, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. On this video, I'm going to be covering different types of immune responses. When I was looking in the comment section, I noticed, and I was seeing this a lot, a lot of you guys are struggling with the different types of immune responses, and I'm hoping that I can clear that up in this video. Before we even get started, you know I'm going to ask you to please support this channel. By supporting this channel, that allows me to produce more material, more videos for you. How can you support um, Nexus Nursing? By engaging. Let me know in the comments what you'd like to see more of. If there's something on the video that wasn't clear, you didn't understand, or something you'd like to see more of, let me know in the comment section. Like this video. Subscribe to my channel. Press that red notification bell. Um, share my content on your news feed, on your social media platforms. And don't forget, guys, I have audio lessons available for you on my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. And you guys can catch me on the other social media platforms. And uh, the questions I cover there are different than what you guys see here every Sunday, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on YouTube. So you guys can practice questions with different types of questions with me on TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. Okay, guys, so before we even get started, you know what I do. I pray with you guys, those who are not interested, just fast forward. But those who are, go ahead, close your eyes, bow your head. Father God, thank you, Lord, for allowing me to be able to make another video for the viewers that are watching right now. Lord, I pray for each and every one of them. They each came here for their own specific reason. Father God, I ask that you please bless them. You help them, Father God, and allow them to be a blessing to others. This license that they're searching for, that they're trying to get, Lord, I ask that you please allow them to be able to help somebody else with that license. Help them to be a beacon of light for you every single place that they go. Lord, I pray for I pray for protection over them. Lord, I pray that you keep them, Father God, and um, bless their lives. Bless the people who are supporting them and cheering them on and just pushing them and telling them not to quit. Lord, thank you for all you've done and all you continue to do in our lives. In Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. All right, guys, let's get started. First question. Which type of immunity is a result of contact with antigen through infection and is the longest lasting type of immunity? One, active innate immunity. Two, passive innate immunity. Three, active acquired immunity. Or four, passive acquired immunity. What do you think? And guys, the correct answer is C, active acquired immunity. Go back to the question. Look at what they're looking for. They're looking for a result of contact with an antigen. So that contact with the antigen is what prompted that immunity to start happening, guys. And so that's active acquired. It's not like it was, get, um, it was uh, given to you. Something that's given to you, that's passed down to you from your mother from birth, that's going to be... A or B, A, active what? Innate. That means born with, guys, present at birth. Active innate immunity. Choice two, passive what? Innate immunity. That means born with, guys. You either got it from, um, uh, um, um, well, I, I can't say that because you're just born with it. So uh, the innate, you're just born with it, okay? But what they're asking in the question was what, type of immunity would prompt you to have that immunity from contact with an antigen. So you didn't have it before, but then when you came in contact with your anti with that specific antigen, your body started producing those antibodies against that antigen. And that is choice C. Um, choice D, passive acquired immunity. That's the one that you get um, from someone, mother. That would be like the breast milk or... Um, the uterus, right? But choices A and B, excuse me, you didn't get from anyone because I think I said that at the beginning and I was lying to you. Choices A and B, you're born with. No one gave it to you, you were born with. That's why it says innate, you were born with. But choice D, passive acquired, you acquired it from who? Your mother, through either breast milk or the uterus. And choice D, active acquired, um, you produced your own antibodies against that specific antigen once your body came in contact with that antigen. So your body comes in contact with the antigen and your body says, you know what? You're a bad guy. Let me go and produce these antibodies so the next time I see you again, my, me and my crew, my antibodies, we're going to recognize you and we're going to get going. 
Okay, so that's the active acquired immunity choice C. Um, please excuse me because at the beginning, I think I did say choice A and B. You got it from the mother, but that's absolutely false. You are born with it. That's why it says innate. When you see that word innate, that means born with. Okay, so please excuse me for that mistake. A and B, born with. Choice D, the passive acquired immunity you got from mom, either through breast milk, placenta, and uh, choice uh, C, as I explained before, your body produced it as a response to contact with that antigen. And I want to explain something to you. So the first time um, um, the body comes in contact with that antigen, the first time, right, what happens is it now recognizes as an enemy. So your body starts to produce antibodies for the next time. The next time your body comes in contact with the antig antigen, that's when you're going to see an uh, immune response on that second contact. So the first contact is um, identification. And the second contact is when you'll see that reaction, okay? All right. Next question. Which type of lymphocytes are involved in direct attack and destruction of foreign pathogens? A, dendritic cells, B, natural killer cells, C, T helper, CD4 cells, or D, T cytotoxic CD8 cells? And guys, the correct answer is D. Uh, T, cytotoxic CD8 cells. Now, first of all, before I even get into this, automatically, I think you should have got, went ahead and got rid of choices A and B because if you look at the question, they asked about what? T, T lymphocytes. So you should have gotten rid of A and B automatically and you should have let, been left with C and D. So let's talk about it. C, the, excuse me, D, the correct answer. T cytotoxic uh, CD8 cells, they directly attack the antigens on the cell membrane, directly, okay? And that's what the question's asking us for. Now let's look at our other answer choices. Choices A, dendritic cells. They actually, the dendritic cells, they capture the antigens. They capture the antigens, then bring it to the T cells. They don't directly um, attack the antigens. They capture it and bring it over to the T cells. So it's not choice A. Um, choice B, natural killer cells. Again, guys, this is not a T cell, but it does help with immunity, but it's not a T cell. We would not choose that answer. Choice C, T helper are CD4 cells. These are also involved in cell immunity, to be more specific, cell mediated immunity. But again, they do not directly attack the antigens. Choice D does, your uh, CD8. So choice D is a correct answer. How does interferon help the body's natural defenses? A, directly attacks and destroys a virus infected cells. B, augments the immune response by activating phagocytes. C, induces production of antiviral proteins in cells that prevent viral replication. Or D, is produced by viral infected cells and prevents the transmission of the virus of two adjacent cells. What do you guys think? Guys, the correct answer is C. It it, excuse me, it induces production of antiviral proteins in cells that prevent viral replication. And guys, this is also known as the antiviral effect. That's exactly what it does. It answers the question, the correct answer is C. What is included in the humoral immunal response? A, surveillance for malignant cell changes. B, production of antigen-specific immunoglobins. C, direct attack of antigens by activated B lymphocytes. Or D, releasing cytokine, I cannot speak. Releasing cytokines responsible for destruction of antigens. And guys, the correct answer is B, production of antigen-specific immunoglobins. And that answers the question directly. They all they all they ask us in this question, guys, this is like an easy question. It's not even critical thinking. What's included in, humo in the humoral immune response? And it's B, production of antigen-specific immunoglobins. Now, let's look at the wrong answer choice, what you should not have chosen. A, surveillance of malignant cells. 
And let's go to D, releasing cytokines responsible for destruction of antigens. Guys, those are functions of the T lymphocytes. The question was asking us about the humoral response, okay? But choices A and D, those are functions of the T lymphocytes. So those couldn't be the answer. Let's look at choice C. Choice C says direct attack of antigens by activated B lymphocytes. Guys, B lymphocytes do not directly attack antigens. They don't. So that's false and it's not answering the question. The correct answer, guys, is B. Which immunoglobin is responsible for the primary immune response and forms anti antibodies to ABO blood antigens? One, one, A, immunoglobin A, B, immune, immunoglobin D, C, immunoglobin G, or D, immunoglobin M. What do you guys think? And guys, the correct answer is D, IgM, immunoglobin M. Um, IgM immunoglobin, it produces antibodies against the ABO blood antigens. That's the correct answer. And I know you guys, matter of fact, um, I'll go over the other types of immunoglobin. Uh, make sure you guys write it down because you have to know these types of immunoglobin. So let's break it down. There's another question that is similar. I'm going to go ahead and explain that to you. Which immunoglobin will initially protect a newborn baby of a breastfeeding mother. Select all that applies. So guys, this is select all that applies. How are we gonna treat it as true or false? Remember guys, you uh, select all that applies. You go through each choice. If it's true, you're gonna keep it. If it pertains and it answers your question, you're gonna keep it. And if it's false, you're not. So go back to the question and it says, which immunoglobins will initially protect a newborn baby of a breastfeeding mother. So it's a newborn baby and they're breastfeeding. Which immunoglobins will help protect them? Let's go through them. A, IgA. IgA, guys, is a, what, immunoglobin A? True or false? True, absolutely true. So IgA uh, protects body surface and the mucous membranes. True. What about B? IgD, immunoglobin D, as in delicious, because I'm greedy and I like to eat. False. Immunoglobin D that's um, involved in uh, B lymphocyte differentiation, okay? Choice C, immunoglobin E, IgE. False. IgE, guys, that's going to be elevated when the patient has like an allergic reaction or maybe um, parasites are involved. That's when you're going to see that IgE elevated, okay? That's not going to help that newborn. Um, that's not going to be giving, help that newborn that's breastfeeding. That's false. What about D, immunoglobin G, as in grade? True. What is that immunoglobin G? Um, that helps with that secondary immune response. Absolutely. What about E? IgM, immunoglobin M. False. Um, this produces um, antibodies against ABO antigens. So our guys, our correct answer is A and D. Please make sure you guys write this down. I know I get comments sometimes that I go too fast and I'm sorry, I'm trying to slow down. But when I talk about this stuff, I kind of get a little excited and I'll start talking fast again. So I hope you guys had a chance to write that down. Um, if not, just rewind and go back, but make sure that you guys know these different types of immunoglobins. By the way, um, I just thought about this. This isn't in the questions. However, it's not often that it's not too often that I'll see um, immunoglobins, they'll show up on um, on the NCLEX. But when they do, okay, um, usually it's about um, hepatitis, okay? And so the question is usually they're trying to figure out if you know the difference between the IgM and um, 
the IgG. So let me just break that down for you. When it's IgM, they're like, it's an active infection, okay? It's active. But when it's um, IgG, it's chronic. So the patient has the hepatitis, but it's not active right now. Okay, so you could think of IgG, that G as gone. They have it, but it's kind of gone. It's just not active. And when it's IgM, that M, think about it like the minute that patient gets infected. Okay, so M is active. It's active right now, but IgG is chronic. They have it, but it's not active. So just keep that in the back of your mind. Write that down as well, because when the this does show up on NCLEX as far as immunity, that's usually what they're asking about. So just know the difference between those two. And I know what you're thinking. Oh, well, Professor D, if um, usually they ask about just those two on NCLEX, if they're asked about why are you doing a whole video on this? Well, I have a lot of students that are still students. They haven't graduated yet and they're covering um, response systems and they don't understand it. So guys, I make this video, yes, for nursing students that have graduated and they're try trying to pass their boards, but I also make these these videos for students who are currently in the program and they're struggling, okay? So that's why. All right, next question. Which characteristic describes immunoglobin E? E as in excellent, I-G-E. A, assists, um, oh, by the way, sorry guys, this is a select all that applies. So we're gonna, again, guys, treat these as true or false, right? Good. A, assist in parasitic infections, true or false? True, like two questions ago, I told you that with IgE, paras parasites or allergic, oh shoot, I get, just gave you the answer. Par parasites or allergic reactions, so true. What about B, responsible for allergic reactions? True, yes. What about C, present on the lymphocyte surface? False. That's what? IgD, as in delicious. What about choice D, assist in B, lymphocyte differentiation? I gave you the answer two questions ago, guys. False. What is that? That's IgD, as in delicious. What about choice E? What does that say? Pre oh, predominant. Predominant. Predominant and secondary immune response. That's IgG. And then last, guys, um, so that's false. And then last is F, protects body surface and mucous membranes. False. That's Ig what? IgA. So choice A and B absolutely is IgE, immunoglobin E. Choice C, that's IgD, as in delicious. Choice D, that's IgD, as in delicious. Choice E, predominant secondary immune response. That's IgG, as in great. And then F is IgA, as in Amazon, where I like to shop. Next question. What are examples of type 1 or IgE-mediated hypersensitivity reaction select all that applies so we're going to again guys treat these as true or false i know you hate select all that applies but you have to practice them that's how you get better so let's go a asthma true what are some triggers of asthma guys smoke dust pollen pet dander cockroaches right true b urticaria True. What's that when the patient, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, has hives all over their body, that's a reaction. That's an allergic reaction from something, right? So those hives that you see, that's the urticaria. C, angioedema. True. And that reaction is severe. That patient's airway can close up and become obstructed and they can't breathe. Um, choice D. Allergic rhinitis. True. And you guys should have guessed that. Look at the word in front of rhinitis. Allergic. Absolutely true. E, atopic dermatitis. Absolutely, guys. And you'll see that patient will get very itchy in those areas of the skin. True. Uh, F, contact dermatitis. False. Contact dermatitis, guys. You'll see this um, in um, type 4. 
And it's also a delayed response. It's not something you'll see immediately. That response is delayed. It's not something that will happen right away with exposure, okay? It's a type four. That is a delayed reaction. So false. Um, G, anaphylactic shock. True, absolutely. Very quickly, you'll see that um, they may have swelling of the face or swelling of their airway, swelling of the eyeballs. They can't breathe. Um, the blood pressure drops immediately, right? And you have to go ahead and give them that EpiPen. I am, right? I am, you're giving that EpiPen, epinephrine right away. Absolutely true. H, transfusion react. A matter of fact, H and I, the transfusion reaction and good pasture syndrome, these are seen in uh, type two, cytotoxic hypersensitivity reactions. They are not type one and they're not immediate, okay? So guys, the correct answer for this is A, B, C, D, E, and G as in great. Wow. We're already down to our last question, guys. No, I'm going to keep going. Just joking. All right. A patient was given an IM injection of penicillin in the gluteus maximus and developed dyspnea and weakness within minutes following the injection. Which additional assessment findings indicate that the patient's having an anaphylactoid reaction? Select all that applies. Guys, how do we treat select all that apply? As true or false, okay? We're looking for an anaphylactoid reaction. Let's go. One, wheezing. Absolutely. And guys, let me tell you something. The reason you're hearing that wheezing, let me tell you what that wheezing is. That wheezing sound that you're hearing, that is air trying to get through an obstructed airway, okay? And that will happen like this. True. Um, B, hypertension. If you tro chose true for hypertension, we have a problem. Did I not just tell you in the last question or question before that the blood pressure was going to do what? Go up or down? Down. So why are you choosing hypertension? No, we would see hypotension. So that's false. Choice C, rash on arms. False. They try to trick you with that. A rash on the arm, that's a simple allergic reaction. We're looking for anaphylactoid reaction. You know what anaphylaxis is? That is a life-threatening, severe allergic reaction. Something that if we don't, we don't deal with this now, that patient's going to die. A rash on the arm, that is not anaphylactic. All right, keep going. Um, D, constricted pupils. False. Their pupils are going to be what? dilated choice e slowed strong pulse false the pulse is going to be rapid but weak let me explain to you why it's rapid the heart is speeding up trying to pump blood out to the body because remember the blood is that's what's carrying the oxygen the vitamins the minerals the nutrients so, so the heart is trying but look so even though it's rapid that pulse is weak okay because guess what that body started to shut down choice F, feeling of impending doom. Yeah. The patient will just have a feeling, oh my gosh, I'm going to die. Something is severely wrong. I need help. So the correct answer, guys, is A and F. All of the other choices are incorrect. A 28-year-old male Gulf War veteran tells the nurse he gets a headache, sore throat, shortness of breath, nausea when his girlfriend wears perfume and when he was painting her apartment. He, he's afraid he has cancer. What does the nurse suspect may be the patient's problem? A, he has post-traumatic stress disorder. Two, he has multiple chemical sensitive sensitivities. Three, he needs to wear a mask when he paints. Or D, he's looking for an excuse to break up with his girlfriend. All right, guys, and the correct answer is B. He has multiple chemical sensitivities. Why? Well, let's go back into the question. All of these symptoms that he's having, he gets it when he smells her perfume and when he painted her apartment. So the scent of the paint 
and her perfume, right? And I know some of you guys were tempted to choose, see, he needs to wear a mask when he paints. Maybe that is the case, but what's he going to do about the perfume? Wear a mask? So the correct answer is he has multiple sensitivities. It's not just the, whenever you guys get a question, guys, you cannot address just part of the question because if you chose C, you are, you are addressing the paint. But what about the perfume? But choice um, B covers both issues. Choice B is the correct answer. Let's look at the wrong answer choices. A, he has PTSD. Um, they try to distract you with the PTSD because in the question they told you that they're a Gulf War veteran. But with PTSD, that patient would be having um, like nightmares, difficulty sleeping, difficulty concentrating, anxiety, depression, right? Those are not the symptoms that we're seeing here. The symptoms we're seeing here are allergic reactions. So that's not it. Don't be fooled by distractors. That was just a distractor to make you get the question wrong. Um, and choice D, he, <laughs> he's looking for an excuse to break up with his girlfriend. Come on, guys. I hope that's not the case. That's not the answer. Let's keep it moving. Why is plasmapheresis indicated in the treatment of autoimmune disorders? A, to obtain a plasma for analysis and evaluation of specific antibodies. B, decrease the lymphocyte levels in the blood to prevent immune responses. C, remove autoantibodies, antigen antibody complexes, and inflammatory mediators of immune reactions. Or D, add monocytes to the blood to promote removal of immune complexes by the mononuclear phagocyte system. And guys, the correct answer by far is C, removal of antibodies, antigen antibody complex, and inflammatory mediators in the immune system. Why? Because those are what's causing the body to attack itself. Remember guys, an autoimmune, when you see that word autoimmune, that means the body is attacking itself. The body's own antibodies, the body's own um, antibody antigen complexes, the things that are supposed to protect you from infection, from viruses, those are working a little bit too much over time, right? And it's causing problems in the body, autoimmune, all of those are attacking the person's own body. So it makes sense. The reason that we use these in autoimmune disorders is we're removing all of the things that are causing the autoimmune reactions. So it makes sense. Troy C is the correct answer, okay? We're removing the things that's making the body attack itself. Before a patient receives a kidney transplant, a cross-match test is ordered. What does a positive cross-match indicate? A, match, matches tissue type for a successful transplantation. B, determines paternity and predicts risk for certain diseases. C, establishes racial background and predicts risk for certain diseases. Or D, cytotoxic antibodies to the donor contraindicate transplanting this donor's organ. What do you think? Okay, guys, and the correct answer is D, cytotoxic antibodies to the donor contraindicate transplanting this donor's organ. Go back to the question. And it says a positive cross match. That's not good. That's bad. That means that um, we should not do this transplant. The body is going to reject that transplant. We may have a very bad reaction. Absolutely not. Now let's look at the wrong answer choices, right? A, matches tissue type for successful transplantation. No. If it's positive, if it's positive, it matches, is mat, I cannot speak. It matches tissue type for unsuccessful transplantation. If it's positive, that transplant will not be successful. So that's why number one is wrong. Instead of saying successful, it should have said unsuccessful. Choice two, determines, patern <laughs> determines paternity and predicts risk for certain disease. Um, this is not a DNA test. This is not uh, pathogenetic, so that's false. I'm sorry. There's a bird that has, um, I don't know, taken a liking 
to my studio window and it's um i think it's a robin and it likes to peck at the window in the studio and so i just heard it pecking it scared the living you know what out of me i'm sorry guys all right um choice c establishes racial background and predicts risks for certain um diseases no that's not what this test for is for seeing if the transplant is going to be successful and if it's positive that lets you know the transplant is not going to be successful again this is not a dna or a pathogenetics so that's false and then um where were we choice d is the correct answer the cytotoxic antibodies to the donor contraindicate transplanting uh, this donor's organ because it's not going to be, the transplant is not going to be successful. So correct. Choice D is the correct answer. When the cross match is negative, that's when it's a green light. That's when it's good. That's when it's go. But if it's positive, it's a no go. Okay. Now we're down to our last question. What is the most common cause of secondary immune deficiency disorders? A, chronic stress. Two, T-cell deficiency from HIV. C, drug-induced immunosuppression. Or D, common variable, try to pronounce this word, hypogammaglobin, you see it. Choice D, you see what that word says. I'm not even gonna try to pronounce it. I tried, didn't work. And the correct answer, guys, is C, drug-induced immunosuppression. So look what they're asking for. Go back to the question and you see they're asking for secondary immunodeficiency disorder. So secondary, what is something that you did, something from outside of the body, something that was not from the inside of the body that is causing this immunodeficiency disorder? Drugs, okay? Certain drugs, guys, can cause um, immunosuppression, such as um, corticosteroids. Remember, corticosteroids, they decrease inflammation, they mask the signs and symptoms of infection, Patients who are on corticosteroids, we have to watch them much, much, much more closely for signs and symptoms of infection. So um, choice number C is the correct answer because um, drugs, medications, that's something that's placed inside of the body that's causing the immunosuppression. It's not something that's within, inside of the patient's body that is causing that immunosuppression or that is even attacking itself. So that's why uh, C is the correct answer. This is something from the outside, not something that's already on the inside of the body. C is the correct answer. Guys, I hope this video was helpful to you. I hope it cleared up the immune responses for you. If you want to see a second video on immune responses, or maybe you don't want to see me do a video like as in question format, maybe you want me to do it in lesson format where I'm actually explaining the different altered responses, let me know and I will definitely add that to my list and produce a, vi and produce a video for you. Please guys, don't forget to like this video, subscribe, press the red notification bell, don't forget you guys can catch me on my other social media platforms such as TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram. And I have audio lessons available for you on my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video and you guys will catch me on the next video.